I've had an aphid problem on my apple trees for the last two years, but this year the ants have really seemed to be managing it for me. However, it went from really dry down here in Southeast Texas to raining for almost two weeks straight. And all of this sooty mold started to develop on my apple tree. I was really worried, but it turns out it's a fungus and this is part of the aphid problem and they actually secrete a liquid called honeydew and that is the life force of this mold and so a lot of this mold will fall off kind of during the drier seasons but it can affect the photosynthesis of your apple trees and i didn't know that aphids and this type of mold can actually go hand in hand so it's actually really interesting um, luckily I don't have to worry about losing my apple trees as you would with something more severe such as black rot, which is a horrible disease that can spread really quickly to all your other trees. So there is goodness in all of this, but if anyone else is in southeast Texas where there's been a lot of rain all of a sudden and it's really hot, don't be surprised if this fungus shows up on your trees as well. Now this apple tree, I cannot pronounce it because I will butcher the name, but it is a variety of apple that needs only a hundred or so hours of freeze time. And since we can't always guarantee freeze time here in Southeast Texas, the weather's so unpredictable. It's one that I went and I purchased before really knowing much about apple trees. And it is great, but it comes from more of a drier climate. These are grown in Israel. A lot of times you'll hear them referred down here as the Israel apple. And it's a nice um, greenish yellow apple, but the issue is that our weather's a lot more wet here, I think, than other regions. And even though it can tolerate um, our heat, I think the, the constant rain during our rainy season really does affect this apple tree. Negatively, I bought it from a big box store. So it was one of the first trees I ever purchased and you can see just how big it's gotten. I planted it, um, wow, maybe almost five years ago now. It was shortly after we moved into this house. But during all of this rain, I haven't been out to do much maintenance. Now, if you look at the top of this apple tree, you can see that there are some branches that are missing. Um, that is because Last year we had a Cat 1 hurricane, which for us isn't a big deal, but it chopped off the branches of my apple tree. I came home from school and they were just gone. Um, and at the time I was going to school in Arkansas State, so I really didn't have, you know, there was no way to prevent it. I was not even in state. But there are all these suckers kind of growing off the bottom. And now these leaves are slightly different than the leaves of this tree. So I know that this one right here is growing below the graft. This may not be because it looks similar to the wood and leaves of my tree. It doesn't matter to me though because all of these right at the base, I'm just gonna cut them off. I don't, you can see where I previously cut the tree suckers off. I always cut those off. Um, I have, I don't, you don't want any apple tree growing or any kind of tree growing from below the graft because a lot of times it's not even an apple tree but it's the root stock of whatever it's grafted to now I don't know what this is grafted to it does for the most part look like apple tree but I can tell you that it's grafted to a either a dwarf or a semi dwarf if I remember correctly and so I'm just gonna cut all these suckers off because that's not what I want you don't want anything growing from below the graft or really even close to the graft at soil level, that just invites more disease into your tree. And the unfortunate part is, if you look, these really enjoy just growing, growing. I mean, it's been cut before. There is a lot of young growth here. And look at that, that's not even apple tree. That's a wild dewberry, which is basically a blackberry, really close related cousin. So you can kind of see just everything growing right in here. So all that has to come off. Look how thick this is. So this is the graft of the apple tree right here, right above the soil line. And I mean, it's massive. And then this is the apple tree itself. And it's also, I mean, my whole hand. 
so you can see just how long I've been babying this tree and why it's so important for me to watch out for any diseases. When you're taking care of a tree for years and years and then it gets diseases, especially something like black rot, you really start to freak out because a lot of times here you're just going to have to remove the tree to prevent it from spreading. Luckily, it just had a sooty mold on it and that'll basically take care of itself. Um, I have trying to do some research and I've noticed that some people are saying that they can treat the sooty mold with vinegar. I don't want to put vinegar on the leaves of my plants, not because I'm worried about the vinegar itself, but mostly because it's extremely hot down here. And I found out really quickly that products like neem oil and even certain soaps that people use as a natural pesticide or fungicide burn the leaves of my plants. Um, it just kind of amplifies the heat. So here's kind of the damage once again. I know I showed it early on in the video, but just so you can really see it and again if you look all of the leaves that have that are also pretty heavily infested with aphids um i don't want to use neem oil anymore to treat aphids because it really it either burns the leaves of your plants because it's always hot here until the sun goes down or it can really affect the beneficial insects that i've worked so hard to thrive on now I do notice, I oh mean I don't know where it went, but there are baby lizards all over this tree. They're actually eating the aphids, which is really cool. Oh, there's one. Uh, let's, can you see him moving on the leaf? Where would he go? There he is, right there in the center. So there are those, there are even love bugs hanging out on this apple tree right here. Um, the ants farm the aphids too, but it's all about balance and clearly we have an aphid problem. So I'm gonna have to figure out what to do then. I did think about spraying some candlelight clay on it because that'll help with things like leaf-footed bugs, um, also known as stink bugs. They're the nymphs for adult stink bugs. And nymph just means immature, they're immature. And so that's definitely gotta go. I really don't wanna put this in the compost bin um, I know it's just a fungi, but still, I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in our local trash bin to be taken to the dump. And then underneath this apple tree, I grew oh, squash, and the last storm that we had was pretty bad, and it ended up ripping an adult squash out, but this one's growing pretty well under the apple tree. I fertilize this apple tree really well with some microlife acidifier once every four to six months and it really seems to be taking off. I also put organic matter on top. This is mushroom compost with some um, mushroom compost underneath and you can see where it's broken down. And then on top, it's just some natural mulch to kind of mulch it in. Originally I used black mulch, but I didn't realize all of the dyes and chemicals that were in black mulch. And when we walked across, it would just dye our feet and our children, and it wasn't a good option for us. So I switched to natural mulch, which honestly is cheaper and well worth it. And my tree's really thriving, except for the obvious issues I've already shown. It doesn't really seem to be affected as bad by aphids as other plants that would die from it. So that's a good thing, but I really wanna try to figure out how to kind of keep everything under control and in check. I don't really have the perfect angle to show the whole tree. I don't really have a good angle to show the whole tree at because I am in an urban area and I don't want to violate too many people's privacy um, by showing off certain parts of my yard. It makes it a little difficult. This tree is right in my front yard and not too far from the road. So, oh boy. Hopefully I can get all of this under control because I really love this apple tree. It's hard not to when you put over um, half a decade of work into something, you really want it to work out. But if it continues to be an issue, just nonstop pest problems or diseases, I'm gonna have to cut the apple tree out and find a different one. One thing that I can definitely say for sure is that when I first started off, I went to box stores because everything was available. But I really see now as I've learned about plants, how poorly these trees are how poorly these trees are really cared for. They're not pruned properly. And so I really wanna look out for that. Now, apple trees, um, from what I've noticed, are kind of pruned. 
they have a central leader, but I bought a couple apple trees from the box store. They did not have a central leader, and they were kind of pruned in an open air method, similar to what you do to stone fruit, and they didn't do well. In fact, a lot of them are fragile and the branches are just breaking off when I barely touch them, so there's no way they're gonna hold fruit. Um, some of those include a gala apple, and I'm just gonna probably, unfortunately, have to remove that or use it as a pretty shade tree in my kids play area because it's just not going to be good quality tree for bearing fruit. However, from now on, I'm definitely going to pay the extra money to just go ahead and buy from a nursery, even if I have to save up all year to do so. I think in the long run, when you're taking care of these trees for literally decades, it really pays to do something because you don't want to invest in a tree, even if it's $20, go ahead and buy you um, a $30 to $50 apple tree from a nursery have it shipped to your house and know that it's good quality so you're not investing all this time into an apple tree like I did and here it is five years later you're wondering if you're going to have to remove the tree altogether. Another issue that we really face here that I don't have on this apple tree thank god um, as far as I know is cottonwood rot and it literally just looks like white soft cotton balls developing all in the soil, all on the roots of the plant. It is devastating here in areas like ours that have the gumbo clay and it can just wipe out all the trees around you, not just fruit trees, just every tree I've had. Um, I've had an issue with it in the past and it really worries me, especially when it comes to my fruit trees. So that's definitely something to think about. I'm not sure that there are any trees resistant to cottonwood rot, honestly. I haven't even been able to find anything on it except for, hey, we don't know how to treat this, which is kind of scary. Um, another issue I'm looking at, now you have to remember, I have not taken care of this tree in, in weeks. I haven't been out here because it's been raining almost every day. And I'm noticing that there are some millie bugs. They're white spiky little bugs on the branches that I cut off of these trees. Um, you can kind of see them, but with the lighting it's hard to see kind of the white spots. That's definitely going to be an issue for me because that will spread to all of my plants. So. Um, Hopefully that balances out on its own. It usually does. Most of our checks and balances here. I try to garden naturally. I really do. And um, my husband hates ants. So he really loves to get rid of those ants in any way possible. So there, sometimes there's a little bit of conflict in our checks and balances and how we view the environment. And I mean, that's going to be anywhere. Unfortunately, you can't always be on the same page with stuff like that. So hopefully I can kind of find a happy mutual solution is the goal. Um, there's that baby lizard once again jumping from tree branch to tree branch. You can see it kind of moving its head a little bit. It's a little blurry from the angle I'm at. It's right here hanging out. And one more thing I want to show before I'm going to go because I was just coming out here to kind of do some maintenance and research on my apple tree myself. But while I'm here, I noticed that this branch is growing here and I don't want it there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prune some of these off. I like to prune them when they're still small because the bigger, the bigger the tree is when it's pruned, like right here, I didn't prune this, it came like this. And as it grew, it creates a pretty big area where kinker and other rots can get into that. And that's not what I want. If it's small, it has a better chance of healing. And you can see throughout the apple tree, some of the smaller ones that I've done myself over time. This is an area where I cut that because it was pretty substantial growth and it was just too full. And then this is where we lost a good portion of the tree, just completely broke off. Um, it was several feet. This tree, at one point, the center leader of this tree was over 10 foot tall. So, uh, man, it lost a good four four feet of the tree right there so I'm definitely having to reshape it I'm hoping some of these branches will come out this way and full fill it out because right now all the branches are kind of on one side of the tree which is not what we want so I'm trying to balance it out that means a lot of pruning a lot of trial and error but the great thing is that you guys get to kind of learn from my mistakes and hopefully not waste the time money and effort that I did so I hope this helps somebody out um, there's just a lot of information. I'm still learning myself. 
So if you have any tips or ideas, just let me know because I learn from you guys um, probably more than you learn from me and I greatly appreciate it. As an afterthought, I noticed that when I was throwing the branches away, I had some aphids kind of and eggs kind of smeared on my hand. Um, I want to make sure I tell you this kind of as a PS, if you will. When you have aphids or any kind of mold, anything, and you're using your tools, please, please take your tools inside and make sure they're properly sanitized. The last thing you want is to cut a vegetable off of your plant with the same thing you're pruning your trees with and either spread a fungus or end up with aphids spread to your other plants. So that's something to really consider, especially if you're like me and you grow a mix of annuals with perennials. Those annuals are not going to fare nearly as well as that five-year-old perennial tree. So that's definitely something to consider. And on that note, I hope everyone has a great day and I'll let you all go.